Hey everybody, Robert Wheeler here with Wipeo Knives, and today I wanted to share something pretty special with you that a good friend of mine, Mark Shelby, and I have been working on for the past year and a half, two years. Uh, it's a brand new bevel jig for knife making, and originally Mark came to me and said, "Hey, I'm a uh, tool maker for I, I've been a tool maker for the past 36 years." And I think I can help you with some things that you're doing through knife making, make things a little bit easier for you. And what he did was he brought to me this jig right here, and he said, can you use this for knife making? And I said, well, you know, let me uh, test it out and, and see how it goes, and I'll, I'll give you my stamp of approval. And basically, I already thought it was a really great jig. It was robust, it was heavy duty. Um, which, which are good things to have when you're grinding because you don't want a lot of wobble or anything. Uh, having the extra weight on this jig, look, that's like half an inch thick. I, I just have to say, it's been great. On these three set screws, you can adjust your bevels accordingly. If you want to do an angled bevel, you can by adjusting one over the other, or you can adjust them all at the same plane. That way you have a nice straight bevel. And the bevel lines have been coming out really, really good on these. And later in the video, I'll show you a demonstration of using these jigs. But just to get to know the jig a little bit better, you have all these three that you set before you go to start your bevel. And then you want to put your knife in. All you have to do is get that little guy out. Stick your knife in here. Let me set this down. And I just kind of line the top up with the top of the jig right here. So I'll just line it up. Pinch it. And then you take this dial here, this knurled dial, and you just tighten it up. And that puts a pretty darn secure grip on this blade. But what you can do even further is just take a 3 16 Allen wrench, which comes with every one of these jigs. He's included them, and that's always a nice plus. But what you do is you just take your Allen wrench and put it in this little screw right here. Do about a quarter of a turn is what I find works the best. And then another quarter turn on the bottom one. And you know that guy's not going anywhere. See how it's still lined up with the top of the jig? It didn't move. <laughs> it's not going to move on you. I, I have hogged with this thing really, really hard against the belts and it does not deviate from this standard right here. Um, it's not going to move, which I thought was amazing. Um, the other thing that I really just found to be beneficial is just putting the knife in here and taking it out. It's, it's really easy to do, and he's made it really easy to do with this big dial right here. You know, I just love the design of this, and, and it's all just friction, uh, holding from friction. You know, there's no, uh, I guess, mechanical hold or there's no physical hold on this other than friction and and it just does it so beautifully well um i absolutely love it because of speed times <laughs> so you know and, and as a as a maker that does this for a living i really heavily depend on my times for getting a knife produced and this little system right here really really helps let's look at it from this side you know i really really enjoy that speed factor and I said, well, Mark, you know, this is, a, this is a phenomenal jig. I can get really good bevels off of it. Is there any way that we could make it faster? And he said, well, what, what do you have in mind? And I said, well, sometimes I, I don't like to set all three of these at once. And I just prefer to have one little set screw in here or something. But, you know, in, in the past, a couple of guys on my channel have said, well, I'd like to have more stability than just one set screw here. And he said, okay, well, you know, what can we come up with? And I said, well, you've been the tool maker for the past 36 years. Let's see what you got in mind and let's see where we can go from there. And what he came up with after a few, um, after a few tries was essentially the same jig, but now he's got a bar here, like a little roll bar that's tied in by these two ends. This one's bolts it on by a smaller hex head and this one right here is a 3 16 hex head and it's just something that you can move with your hands if you want 
that's how I like to do it. Uh, Mark says it's designed to unlock right here. And then you can set your bevel. Let me adjust my camera here. And you can adjust your bevel anywhere you want real nice and quick. So you got this much of a room all the way down to zero up to this high of an angle. And all you have to do is come in here, put your Allen key in, and then you have it nice and sturdy. It's set. So, but what I like to do is I like to tighten this down and just let this ride. Be because that way I can make super minute adjustments if I have to. Like I can just barely move it. That was, I barely moved the angle on it because when you're trying to do a blade on the fly, you can just barely adjust this back piece and get the exact angle that you want. You can find it exactly on your belt. And I'll show you how I do that. But <laughs> when Mark made this piece right here, I was just absolutely in love with this jig. It, it does everything quick for me. That's what I really, really liked about it. And, you know, I didn't have to fiddle with little small screws or anything uh, and worry about losing those or anything. You know, they're all right here and really they never have to come out. So that's great because I hate trying to find little screws in the shop or anything like that. And, um, you know, he's knurled this bar along here and he's knurled this big knob. And when, when you're grinding in water and oil all day, it's nice to have that. So that way you can move it. And it's pretty stiff to move when I tightened it down like that. So, let's see how... See, each one, I just did like three ticks. You probably didn't even see. That's how minute you can adjust it. Uh, but it, it stays in this... It's all friction again. But you can put enough pressure on here that it's not going to wobble around. And this is what I've used to make all my knives uh, within the past couple years. And just to show you it's held up, this is the girl right here that's been making it all happen. And, you know, a little dirty and everything, but over, you know, I've never cleaned this jig over the past two years. And it's held up great. And that comes from the aluminum uh, elbow right here that it's all... It's all made out of and or this you know angle iron but it's made it's made out of aluminum half inch thick so that weight is there um, and you can get a really really good uh, stability out of it so this has all been aluminum he's got all stainless steel screws and fittings on here and let me tell you something that is really really nice to have especially when you're dipping this whole thing in water, like I, I've dipped this whole jig in water many times over and just, you know, it's sat out to dry and I've never oiled it, nothing. I don't have to worry about it rusting. It actually, if you can see here, all this, well, it looks like rust. That's not from the jig. This is all aluminum and stainless. This rust is from the knives that I use and it's the dust uh, that comes off of the knives and then dries on there and then rusts. So the jig itself is not resting. It's, hold, it's held up over 200 knives. It does really, really well. You know, the... Oh, I can't even get that out of there. One second. Got to loosen these up. And that's, you know, I love that, that it stays in there so tight. So we have two models here. And this is the GF1 and this is the GF2. GF stands for grind fixture, so grind fixture 1 and grind fixture 2. Let me pull out the new one here. That way you can see what you're really paying for. But uh, when we come to price, uh, the GF1 is $150 plus, uh, I, believe, I believe he said 10 or 15 to ship. I'll have to check on that, but $150 for this jig. And for the GF2, it is going to be $237.50. And the reason for the price increase on this jig is just simply the amount of machining that Mark has to do. And he, he makes these all himself, by the way. You know, this isn't produced out of, out of a factory. You're, you're also supporting a guy who's trying to do things on his own and produce things his way. So the, the extra cost is simply for the machining. But with this jig, you have to, you have to understand 
the time factor that this bar alone can save you, other than these three uh, points on this jig. This is a wonderful jig, but this is a faster one. You know, so just like cars, <laughs> you pay for the performance. And I have absolutely preferred this one since, uh, you know, time is money for me. And I just absolutely love this jig. However, this jig is great. So 150 on the GF1 and 237.50 on the GF2. Absolutely worth the price upgrade for this one. Um, but we still have a model available for for somebody who may not be making uh, a bunch of knives or something, and you, you have the extra time to to deal with the the bevel adjustment. So uh, you're you're really getting the Cadillac here though, and I'll show you on the grinder how that really does save you the amount of time. Um, so why don't we just go over to the grinder and I'll show you how they perform. Uh, I know this is like a really long intro, but it's really about the jigs and how awesome they really perform. Um, I've been getting such great bevel lines, but let's go over to the grinder. We'll show you that. All right, guys, it's a little loud in the grind room so because I got my fan running in the background, uh, but it's going to keep all the dust out for me. But I just wanted to show you just from, you know, we got a bevel on this side. Uh, we still got to put a bevel on this side of this knife. And I just wanted to show you, not all set up, just how fast you can really get in here and put a bevel on this knife. So I won't speed up the time or anything. I'm actually using a bit of a worn out belt. I gotta put in another order for those sometime soon. But this is like a, it's originally a 36 grit belt, but I'm probably operating at a 100 grit belt. And uh, just to even further show you how much we're gonna be able to do here. Now I did actually scribe a line on here. This is a this is an older piece that I have that I haven't worked on in a while, um, but you can see the scribe line is right here, and maybe I'll just rescribe that for you so you can see it a little bit better. All right, guys, I rescribed the line on this knife so you can see it a little bit better. It's right here at the end of my thumb, runs all the way down, and curves up right here. So we're gonna slap this into the jig and get the grinding. Hey guys, don't forget your respirator and eye protection. Alright, so we're going to grind now and get this puppy in the jig. Pull out the back piece. Line her up. Lock it in. And just to let you know, we're going to be using this uh, good old faithful jig that I've used over the past couple years. And uh, just to let you know, it's still holding up strong. We're not going to be using a new one. So, alright, our jig's in there, or our knife's in the jig. Do a quarter turn, quarter turn. Alright, we're ready to go. All right, guys, just to show you a quick break. We got that much of the knife done. You see the bevel on there. It's already pretty darn nice. And we ain't even done yet. And this is a worn out belt. 
so the jig is actually keeping it pretty darn stable despite the uh, the poor cutting performance of this belt and that's why I wanted to use a poor belt just to show you how how well that jig keeps that uh, knife in place and you can see it when I'm rubbing it across here just how smooth it runs so I'm gonna keep going finish it up and show you where we're at also by the way since I gotta move my grind up to meet that bevel I have to back this off just a little bit now over time you may have a tendency to stick in there so I just take some pliers right here and get a little bit better grip on that and back it off and this gives me immense control on the bevel that I want so I can I can adjust this uh, this rod right here to exactly the line and the angle that I want to give so I'm backing it off just a little bit and here we go Alright guys, that's where we're at right now. We're stopping about, eh, about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch away from the final grind line because we're going to move up in a stage and grit. That way uh, we can move to a final piece to show you how straight we can actually get these bevels. But what I do is I just take this whole thing and dunk it right down in to cool the steel off. But you're getting a really nice bevel on a really poor belt with a great jig. Alright guys, now we switched out our belt. We got a really, well uh, let me... Let me show you here. We got a really nice fresh belt, 150 grit, and that's typically what I use to stage up my grits to send out for heat treat. So we're just going to use that. We're going to use that and show you how much that really makes this bevel come together in this jig. Alright, now when you get your final bevel to where you want it, take your Allen wrench, just come over here, 
undo your little set screws, back them off a quarter turn, and then loosen up your big uh, knurled knob here, and you have your bevel. Now this is ready for heat treat, ready to go in. And you, you can notice I didn't take it all the way up to that line. That's simply because when it comes back from heat treat, there's going to be grinding to do left. So we didn't want to quite hit this mark yet. But as you can see, that is one awesome bevel on this jig. Alright guys, so there you have it. A wonderful bevel put on a knife in no time at all. And, you know, that is your main hogging material. That's, that's all hogged off. And then, you know, when it comes back from heat treat, you'll really clean it up. Get this bevel looking nice and hand sand it if you want. But that, that bevel right there produced on these jigs. And it's just awesome I, I use it for all my knives I love using a jig just for the simple fact that uh, you, you don't have the the stresses of freehand grinding uh, yes a lot of knife makers freehand grind and yes sometimes there are screw ups but I have had next to zero screw ups on 200 knives done with this and I don't know some guys may think that it's cheating cheating using a jig I think it's just uh, a way for us knife makers to produce a better knife for you guys uh, or if you're a knife maker watching this uh, it's a little bit uh, less stress on making your blades and and really just putting out a better product that's that's really all there is to it I wouldn't call jigs cheating at all it's just uh, helping you guys out and um, like I said before the GF1 is 150 the GF2 is $237.50. You can pick them up on my website personally over at www.whitebonenives.com. Uh, order whenever you like, and then I'll send the order to Mark, and he will ship out as soon as he receives the order. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, just go pick yourself up a jig if you're serious about knife making. Um, I, I just I absolutely love these. And, and plus, you know, to top it all off, you're helping a guy that's trying to make his own tools and trying to make a difference for all you knife makers out there or hobbyists alike. And uh, that about wraps it up, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and God bless.